All right, we're back with the Alcat for the next day. So in an ideal world, I would have uh, figured everything out uh, yesterday and gotten it all done, but that's just too much work. Uh, so we're continuing today. And uh, nice news, uh, we actually made a UI that fits on my screen, which is nice. I can actually access all the data without having to do the horrible uh, tilty thing. Uh, and uh, there's uh, a firmware update I'm going to do, which uh, is going to uh, give uh, me that uh, feature to run the DC-DC converter, something we'd actually just completely forgotten uh, before. Uh, we'd just uh, not consider the DC-DC, which was a real brain fart on my part. But uh, the new firmware is going to make it so that one of the re relay outputs on the board uh, is just going to be tied straight to... Uh, the contact status. So as soon as the contact is on, uh, that relay is going to change state. So we can use that so, to make it so that as soon as the contact is on, uh, that can trigger the DC-DC, and we have DC-DC as soon as HV is enabled, which is a bit rudimentary, but it's, it's better than using both relay outputs to do essentially the same thing, but in a completely stupid way. Uh, so I want to disconnect a bunch of stuff on here, rip the board out of its horrifying wrapping. If I have time, I'm going to make a slightly better mind for it as well. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, get started with the firmware update. All right, we're on packed. So uh, we're going to do the firmware update, which is a bit of a procedure right now. So for starters, I'm going to disconnect the main contact because in case something goes wrong, that could actually cause the uh, PWM to lock up and send 12 volt DC to the contactor potentially either blowing the fuse or frying the contactor. We don't want that to happen. Uh, and we're going to put this switch number five to on. Uh, and then we need to reset the board because currently it's just running. Uh, the uh, switch is going to put it into bootloader mode. And uh, now we have well, I, I think that's actually what it's supposed to do. So, uh, to flash the phone, we'll just have a uh, straight up AVR, do, AVR dude with a uh, fake with a uh, standard script. So, I've set that up. Okay, let's uh, try that on a computer running an actual 64 bit operating system so we have a correct version of the AVR dude. That's looking a lot better. Okay, cool. That should be it. We should now have a new firmware. Let's uh, flick that off, restart the thing. And hopefully, I now actually have a working output like I want. And we hopefully don't have a bricked device even there. That looks to still be alive. Good. Right, onwards. Right, so with the firmware update uh, taken care of, uh, we're going to be focusing on uh, the mess back here today uh, because most of this stuff is kind of legacy uh, and not needed anymore. Uh, this relay is my old AC detect relay. I'm planning to replace the function of that with a 230 volt contactor, which is going to signal the BMS that AC is connected. Uh, and We'll have all of this stuff, which is taking up a huge amount of space, is just for wiring the fans up. And we have one more relay there, which I don't remember what it does, and the heater relay, which uh, probably not going to touch today. I also want to take the charger out because we actually have this uh, nice, really nice meanwhile charger has an enable input, and I want to use that with the new BMS to shut down the charger before the contactor goes off, uh, because that just that's just nicer for everything. We could also wire this on like a relay uh, in series with the mains, but then we'd have to have power electronics breaking the entire current going into the charger, which is just not good since we have a soft power off. Uh, so I think I'm just going to take this apart and solder a couple of leads into the charger enable input and wire that up to the uh, two of the relay pins, which, are, which we're going to free up on here. Uh, so that's going to give us actual nice soft charger control. Uh, and... Uh, uh, I have actually, uh, the, down here we have a uh, thermostat for uh, monitoring the charger heatsink, which uh, 
automatically toggles the fan power supply on and off, I need to re-enable that because I've, uh, right now I've got the uh, fan power supply here, which is a 5 volt supply, uh, powering this relay, which also gives us the AC detect functionality. So if I have that, uh, this entire thing on a thermostat, uh, AC detect doesn't work if the car is cold, <laughs> which is not very good. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff to... Uh, just to clean up and reconfigure, but I think I'm going to start with a charger because that's the biggest question mark I need to figure out how to get it out, take it apart, a bunch of annoying stuff. Alright, and there's the charger taken out with all its uh, thermal compound making a huge mess. Thankfully this thing is really easy to get in and out. out. And here's the uh, sort of mystery connector that uh, Meanwell has given us. But as you can see we have uh, two jumpers. Uh, the top one is to uh, configure this as a uh, DC power supply, not a lead acid battery charger, and the second one is the remote on off. So if we remove that jumper, uh, the charger will just never turn on. So right now I'm considering either taking the jumper out, cutting it in two and turning it, turning it into a connector, or just uh, soldering onto those two leads. Either solution is uh, not difficult at all. Uh, there we go. Not the uh, nicest looking installation in the world, but it should be uh, reliable enough. So now if we uh, short these two leads together, uh, the charger uh, should turn on. Now I don't have any extra IEC leads with me, so we're just going to have to reinstall them in the car and uh, hook it up to the BMS, and uh, hopefully everything's going to be fine. Uh, I found all the instructions, so I don't think there's much to do, do wrong there. As long as you don't give the wrong pins, uh, it's going to be fine, and I definitely have the right pins. Well, there we go, that's the charger installed back in the vehicle and our new mystery lead goes to two of the wires which go to one of the relay outputs on the BMS. Now, uh, the car is actually plugged into 230 volts, uh, but uh, here on the main power uh, wire to the battery we can see there's basically no current running. And uh, that's because uh, these uh, contacts to the relay to the BMS are disconnected. So let's see what happens when we plug those in, but... Ah, there we go. We are charging at the set current. So, uh, the uh, charger, uh, the charger turn on off uh, wiring is done correctly. Now let's see if uh, the BMS does it correctly, and I'm gonna need to be pretty quick with this. So we'll uh, disconnect that. And uh, yeah, click, charger went off, and in a moment the contact is going to go off. Click. Beautiful. So the sequence is, of course, that the charger enable turns off uh, before the contactor turns off. Uh, we're going to have to verify that on the charger, like voltage disconnect as well. But here we definitely saw that that relay turned off before the contactor turned off, which means that the charge is going to be off before the contactor turns off, which is good. That means there's going to be no current flowing uh, when the contactor turns on. Let's see if I can do the same thing uh, when enabling the charger. This is going to be a bit more difficult, I think, just from the uh, logistics of the wiring. So, click. Ah, oh, that was pretty tight. I'm not sure which uh, triggered first, actually, but that might be adjustable. I need to dig into that. Right, yeah, so I had some issues with the configuration of the outputs, but it's still... The charger enable is a bit questionable. I need to double-check how that's actually set up in the code. Uh, but we can check the uh, uh, normal uh, charge cycle complete to turn off sequence. So... Uh, right now we're, it's uh, charging, you can see there was current flowing, and we can just write a uh, cell, uh, a uh, charge cutoff voltage, which is, uh, you know, below the uh, current uh, uh, voltage. So if we just write config here, uh, we, we're going to, it's going to go, oh yeah, I'm, my cell voltage is high enough, I should stop charging. So uh, let's see what happens when we do that. And now we could see the relay turned off right away, the charger is disabled, and there the contactor let go. So the normal charge finished uh, system is uh, working just fine. That's, that's roughly the procedure you want to see. You want to see the charger off with a decent margin and then the contactor off. 
So that's nice, it's working. I've simplified the wiring, can you tell? So yeah, this is uh, really busy. So uh, what I've been doing for the last hour or so is basically allowing Tink and BMS to control the uh, charger cooling. Uh, because previously I've just had uh, this uh, thermostat down there cut for 230 volt to the uh, what's now the AC detect circuit, so that had to go. Uh, so uh, what's uh, going on now is uh, I'm using the uh, flexible input mapping uh, to essentially use uh, uh, two. Uh, I, I've got two of the out two outputs on the BMS configured to the same thing, which is charger enable. So uh, the BMS has, uh, in its current iteration, has uh, uh, two relay outputs and uh, a bunch of open collector transistor outputs. These are made for running light loads or driving relay calls or something like that, while these are potential free and can be used for more iffy things like the charger, which has its own 12-volt uh, power supply. Uh, but uh, what I've done now is, uh, since I'm already using one of the relay outputs to control the charger, uh, and the other one is uh, controlling so uh, controlling the DC DC, uh, I need to use the transistor outputs to control uh, other things which need controlling. So essentially, uh, this uh, grey lead here goes to one of the uh, open collector outputs, and uh, I've, uh, basically I've wired it up so that we get uh, 12 volts from the main power to everything into a positive lead of these uh, fan connectors. There's a couple of fans underneath here which. Uh, circulate air while charging uh, and uh, those then the negative side uh, go, go to uh, the open collector output so essentially when I plug the charger in and the car thinks it's supposed to charge it's going to ground out that and the fans are going to turn on and uh, it's running just fine right now uh, it's been a bit iffy because uh, this whole box has a whole bunch of fans it's actually got two charger cooling fans one main exhaust fan for cooling the motor drive and a fan of a DC DC. So this thing is a real mess of airflow. Uh, but uh, in the original iteration, while charging, you were only using the two charger fans which are underneath of all this. And uh, the way the air airflow is designed, it will actually pull air in there, down through these holes along here, across the heatsink, and then out on the underside of the box. So the airflow goes now, because of the way it's been designed, I've had no previous uh, fan automation. So as soon as the AC was in, the fans were on. And to save this thing from being a vacuum cleaner, save some power, and to save the life of the fans, I've run them off of the 5-volt you know, power supply, which is doing the AC detect. That's why that's a 5-volt power supply. We have this 5-volt uh, relay here. Uh, and to make that work a bit better, I also wired up the motor cooling fan, which is a, uh, it's a, a centrifugal fan underneath there, which is just uh, providing negative pressure to the entire thing, and that's the only actual exhaust of a box. Uh, I don't want to be using that, uh, because it's integrated with the motor control, and it's sort of annoying uh, to drive. I had to use some uh, big diodes and stuff to control it before. Uh, I, I really want to use only these two fans, if at all viable. So I rewired that up to run off of 12 volts from the uh, uh, just standard 12 volt system of the car. And uh, that's uh, right now testing out. Uh, we are charging, it's running, and I just uh, checked out to see if there's enough airflow, and there's absolutely enough airflow, which is a relief. Uh, the original fans were too, like, ridiculous, like 30 watt, 230 volt AC fans, which were real vacuum cleaners. I've replaced them with a couple of uh, uh, ball bearing uh, uh, computer fans, uh, gentle typhoons, which are nowhere near as powerful, but uh, significantly quieter. We can be speaking here while they're running. And they actually provide, they're gonna, this charge is so efficient, they doesn't produce that much heat at all. So that's gonna be absolutely fine. Ah, and that's real nice to have that out of the way. This entire mess here is really not not very optimal, it, but uh, I have re re been able to reduce three uh, terminal blocks and a bunch of like jumpers and wiring and just random annoyances which make this... Uh, it, it was a lot messier than it is now, even though it's still a big mess because I'm not really 
doing any wire management. I also rewired the 230 volt input of the AC detect power supply to actually use a double, uh, double uh, insulated wire there to make it a bit safer. Uh, but yeah, onwards, I do have sometimes when I'm thinking about cons uh, dealing maybe partially with the heater because uh, integrating the heater is going to be a bit of an issue. It's a bit annoying, it's going to require an extra relay uh, because we actually have uh, integrated PWM control for uh, Tesla cooling pumps in the BMS since it's intended to work with uh, Tesla uh, batteries. So if you have Tesla batteries, there's a decent chance you're going to have uh, a Tesla cooling pump at hand as well. So we have this uh, uh, heater and pump PWM uh, setup where you can configure a heater like one of the GPI opens to be an able heater and another one can be PWM output to control the speed of the uh, Tesla cooling fan, you know, cooling pump. And that's not uh, implemented at all in my setup. It is working with the software, but I haven't uh, had any chance to actually wire that up. So I'm still using my little uh, standalone uh, Tesla pump controller thing down there. That should ideally be uh, controlled by the BMS because that's, well, we've gone to the effort of uh, making the feature available and it's going to provide much better temperature control uh, than the current system, which is absolutely horrifying. Uh, but I also need to make a better main for that, so I need to think about what I'm going to do right now. Well, that's more like it. So I've done a really uh, low effort uh, PCB mount for the uh, Tinkan BMS mainboard. Uh, it's just uh, some uh, translucent, uh, uh, transparent uh, PET plastic I had cut to holes to mount for board, so it's screwed in with uh, just a top plate uh, mounted on top to stop anything dropping down on it. So that's reasonably neat and tidy. Tidied off a wiring, figured out some of the you know, some better connector optimizations. Never had know that the input mapping works as it should. Uh, redid the contactor wiring to some more heavy duty double insulated wire and it's all coming down neat and tidy there it's a bit haphazard there but that's not really a big deal yeah so this is currently working just fine i'm super happy with that and in the back i've basically just taped down the connector block there this is more or less ready to go i need to tie up a couple of loose ends for the old fan wiring which still uh, isn't really going to be used. Uh, so yeah it's moving towards six o'clock again I need to uh, start getting my ass out of here but this seems to be working really well and the char charger automatics seem to also be doing exactly what they should which is really nice. Uh, once again the clock strikes six the sun is rising and we're packed and ready to go. And isn't it a joy of working on invisible products when you know you've done a good job, when absolutely nothing's changed when you're done. But we have a nice BMS mount, we have actual charger automation, uh, which uh, works. We have a new firmware installed, and hopefully we're gonna make uh, the way back home again. Although it's not quite as exciting this time, I'm pretty sure it's going to be just fine. So I'm going to have to thank you for watching. Cheerio.